the Lord. Beloved, it's an honor to come to you once again to share with you the word of God, which is alive and powerful and which has answers to all our problems. Beloved, the word of God is our manual for life. God has given us his words in the Bible, beloved, to teach us how to live a righteous life and to give us answers to all the problems that we will have on this life. And this is why God said to us in Joshua 1 verse 8, that we should meditate on his words day and night and do what he has said to us to do. And if we do all that is written in his word, beloved, he promises us that we will have success in every everything that we do. And so, beloved, do not let the word of God in the Bible depart from your mouth. Beloved, say it, speak it, keep reading it, and keep meditating on it, so that, beloved, the will of God for your life will come to pass in Jesus' name. So, beloved, we are still continuing our studies on the book of Genesis. We are almost through. And so, beloved, if you missed any of the studies so far, please watch it from this channel. And please subscribe so that you always be notified to watch when a video becomes available. And so, beloved, in the previous uh, weeks, we've been studying about the life of Joseph. And today we are studying Genesis chapter 45. Last time we studied Genesis chapter 44, where we learned that Joseph hid his cup in Benjamin's sack. He did this to test his brother's character, to see if they were still wicked and jealous, and they would abandon Benjamin and treat him badly as they had treated him 22 years previously. Joseph's test succeeded, but this time the 10 brothers showed compassion to Benjamin, and Judah gave a powerful emotional speech offering to take the punishment of Benjamin to become a slave to Joseph so that Benjamin can return safely to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. So today's study, which is Genesis chapter 45, is continuation of where we learn from Genesis chapter 44. And so after Judah selflessly accepted Benjamin's punishment to become the servant of Joseph, even though they were not guilty of stealing Joseph's cup. Verse 1 of Genesis chapter 45 says, Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. After hearing Judas' emotional speech and his humble plea to take Benjamin's punishment, Joseph could no longer hold his emotions in and he burst forth with tears. Joseph's dream had finally come true and he sees his brothers before him. And beloved, he finally reveals his true identity to his brothers. For the first time in 22 years, Joseph finally reveals himself to his brothers. But the brothers are still in shock and they are terrified of what Joseph might do to them. Because Joseph is a type or shadow that represents Jesus Christ, Joseph's brother's shock is prophecy of what will happen when the Jewish people finally see Jesus Christ in his glory as the Son of God. And God foretold this to Zechariah in Zechariah 12 verse 10. And God said that, Then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the family of David and on the people of Jerusalem. They will look on me whom they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son. They will grieve bitterly for him as for a firstborn son who has died. So just as Joseph's brothers were shocked to see the one that they reported death alive, so would Jesus' brothers, the Jews, be shocked to see Jesus Christ, the one that they killed, alive and given power and authority to govern all over heaven and earth. And so, beloved, reading on from verse 4, 
when Joseph had revealed himself to his brothers, he said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother, Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it is to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been famine in the land and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth to save your lives by a great deliverance. Joseph has all the power now. He could easily seek revenge for what they did to him and no one could blame him. But instead he says, don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me into this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Joseph didn't want them to be sad or to be angry with themselves because he saw that God's purpose was greater than the evil they meant for him. And so in verse 8, Joseph continued to speak to them and he said, So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household and ruler over all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and heads and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. But if you don't come, you and your family and your animals will starve to death. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking with you. Tell my father about all my glory in Egypt and about all you have seen. And bring my father here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him weeping, and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. Joseph was affectionate and loving to all his brothers. He did not exclude the brothers who were cruel to him. Since Joseph received honor and authority to become the governor over all of Egypt, he has not been able to share this wonderful news with any of his family. But now God makes it possible to unite with his family again. And if there is one person that Joseph wants to share this wonderful news with, that will be none other than his own beloved father, Jacob. And so he can't wait to see his father to share this great honor that has been given to him in Egypt. And so, beloved, reading on, it says, When the news reached Pharaoh's palace that Joseph's brothers had come, Pharaoh and all his officials were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, load your animals and return to the land of Canaan and bring your father and your families back to me. I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you can enjoy the fats of the land. You are also directed to tell them, Take cats out of the land of Egypt for the courage of your children and your wives and get your father and come. Never mind about your belongings because the best of all Egypt will be yours. So the sons of Israel did this. Joseph gave them cats as Pharaoh had commanded and he also gave them provisions for their journey. To each of them he gave new clothing, but to Benjamin he gave 300 shekels of silver and five sets of clothes. And this is what he sent to his father. Ten donkeys loaded with the best things of Egypt and ten female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and other provisions for his journey. Then he sent his brothers away 
and as they were leaving, he said to them, don't quarrel on the way. Joseph knew as soon as these men left his presence, they would begin to argue and blame each other for the wrong they did to him. And so he tells them, do not quarrel on the way. And so beloved, reading on, it says, so they went up out of Egypt and came to their father, Jacob, in the land of Canaan. They told him, Joseph is still alive. In fact, he is ruler over all Egypt. Jacob was stunned. He did not believe them. But when they told him everything Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the cart Joseph had sent to carry him back, the spirit of their father, Jacob, revived. And Israel, who is Jacob, said, I'm convinced my son, Joseph, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. For 22 years, Jacob had believed a lie that his beloved son, Joseph, had been killed by a wild animal. And the thought of not seeing his beloved son Joseph again made him give up living even though he was alive. Because he said it in Genesis chapter 37 verse 35 that I will go down to the grave mourning my son Joseph. But when he saw the cart that Joseph had sent to carry him, his spirit came back again. Jesus said it in John 14, verse 2 and 3, that I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and get you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. Beloved, just as Joseph was sent ahead of his family to prepare a place for them in the land of Egypt during their famine, so is Jesus Christ our Savior now in heaven preparing a place for us where he will come and get us to be with him. And so, beloved, God will soon send Jesus Christ to come and get his children. Beloved, are you ready? If you are not, then, beloved, be ready and prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because Joseph knew the assignments God had for him to prepare a place for his family, he did not take to heart the evils that they did to him. And so instead of accusing his brothers, he encourages them not to be angry with themselves and three times tells them that God sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Joseph realized that God is the one who ruled his life, not men, nor circumstances. And so because he knew God was in control of his life, God will make all things that were even against him work together for his good. Joseph's brothers admitted their guilt and they demonstrated real change in their attitude and in their actions. And this did not only make Joseph weep, but he revealed himself to them and embraced them as dearly beloved brothers. Joseph really forgave his brothers and this is what you must do if you really want true healing in your relationships. Romans 8 verse 28 makes it very clear that for those who love God, all things shall work together for their good. And so, beloved, if you love God, then those betrayals that are meant to harm you, those pains, beloved, and those hurts, God is going to make them all together work for your good. God had decided beforehand that Jesus Christ would die on the cross because it was all part of his plan to save us from our sins. Just as God used Joseph's betrayal to preserve and to save people's lives, so did he use Jesus' betrayal to save our souls from hell. And so, beloved, all you need to do to escape hell is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to, beloved, confess him with your mouth that God raised him up from the dead. The cross was the greatest evil that was committed against our Savior, Jesus Christ. But it was part of God's redemptive plan to save our souls from hell so that we can live forever with him in heaven. And this is why Jesus could cry out from the cross and say, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do in Luke chapter 23 verse 34. Like Joseph, Jesus knew God was working out his plan 
And this is why he was able, beloved, to forgive as he hung dying on the cross. And if you know that God is working out his plan in your life because, beloved, you love him, this is how you'll be able also to forgive other people because you know that God will make all their evil intentions against you work together for your good. For if God used the evil committed by sinful people against Jesus Christ, then he can certainly use any evil you experience to accomplish his good and his perfect will in your life. Knowing this truth that God is working all things together for your good is what will give you faith and enable you to forgive other people. And so beloved, we've come to the end of today's study. But please join me again next time as we share in Jacob's joy of finally seeing his long lost son after 22 years. And so beloved, until then, may the joy of the Lord be your strength in Jesus' name. You are blessed.